This is part 10, texturing the hair in body paint, Photoshop, and 3D Studio Max. I'm Ben Mathis, and my website is www.poopinmymouth.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, lay down the general shapes of the hair. This is uh, body paint, and I'm using the chalk brush. So it creates kind of a hair-like fiber pattern uh, just by making regular strokes. So I've got kind of a dark and light colors based on the, the hair volume or the hair color it's kind of strawberry blonde in the front and more of a yellow blonde in the back so right now I'm doing the darks in the back trying to set up kind of different locks of the hair so it's not all solid they're just flowing in the general direction uh, using the more red colors at the part I want to be able to have it flow from one to the other So one of the things that really sells hair to look like hair is to have um, lots of sharp highlights that then fade into uh, dark reflections. And that's kind of imitating the environment that it's uh, reflecting, or the environment the hair is in that it's reflecting. It's very reflective. It gives off a lot of the coloring. So those dark colors there are supposed to be like kind of the, the deep sheen of it reflecting a dark area of the environment. So by having an area that goes from a, a sharp highlight to a dark um, sheen, it kind of sells it as being more hair-like. So all of these colors I'm trying to keep in patterns that make it look like hair even now from the far away. I haven't gotten into any individual strands. This is all just clumps and showing the general direction. But from a, you know, if you get a few feet away from here it still looks like hair um, so that's what I'm focusing on right now in the painting getting darks at the roots that's normally an area that doesn't reflect a lot um, working on the alpha so that it looks nice and uh, hair like like it's actual hairs coming out of the scalp instead of a fade darker colors at the roots making sure I'm I'm trying to get lots of color variation I'm not just using the same colors. Right now at the beginning I'm not doing much color picking at all. I, I only want to pick new colors so that I'm constantly picking slightly different ones. So that one, that I just wanted to make a real dark part where kind of some of the hair being swept back is going over the other chunks. So that's what that one was for. Adding a little bit of orangey into the hair to get more variation. Just picking out different clumps. Darkening this to make it look like a fold rolled over itself, so there's like an inside and an outside. And I'm darkening the edges to look like, uh, and that's me cleaning up the alpha so that I can get it real solid back here. And uh, body paint, that switched over to Photoshop briefly. So now I'm trying to keep it shadowed where the um, bun is keeping the light from reflecting off the hair. And just kind of trying to deepen everything as I as I see it need it. Painting some in 3D, some on the flat view. More highlights. Darks along the roots. Now in, uh, in Photoshop, I matched up the bangs to look a little bit better. Checking them. Now brought it back into body paint. So now the um, bangs actually touch, so it's a bit easier to to get everything to match up there. So lots of, uh, again, more color variation, kind of peach colors in here. Making Make sure your darks always um, correspond to the base color of what you're painting. So the darks I'm using for the bangs are a different color than the darks I use for the back portion. They're more of a, a deep red, um, like what what the, the strawberry blonde would kind of reflect, whereas the dark parts in the blonde hair are a bit more of like a, um, a greenish with a, just a teeny bit of red to it, much less. So now this is the shadow that the bangs are casting on the top of the head. This is one of the ways to try and give it volume so it doesn't look quite so much like just a helmet of hair. 
Um, her hairstyle, I wanted her to look like the really neat military oiled back kind of hair. So normally I would try to have a lot more flyaways and alpha planes to give away the, um, the, the hair as being actual hair-like. Uh, so now I'm actually going into a projection mode, which means I can paint straight across seams, and when I leave it, it will, uh, it will break it apart. So this shows how it matches up now. But yeah, so I went more with a helmet-type hair just to show um, her military abilities. So now in Photoshop, I masked out the good area and blurred it into the, the other area so it could be more seamless. This is the dark sheen on the hair on the bangs to make them feel more like hair. It's that dark and light, dark and light that really sells the look of hair. You can check out the all the shampoo and uh, conditioner advertisements to see how their luscious hair changes from a dark to a light that really sells it as looking like hair. Also, lots of clumps. Don't ever let everything run in the perfect direction. Even people who have a hairstylist have a bit of, you know, uh, variation. So now I've got it back in Photoshop, and I'm using the um, the hard light, or the, sorry, the soft light um, painting mode. So I've got a dark and a light color that correspond with the hair, and by painting over it like this, it doesn't kill my... Um, the strands I've already created, it just kind of enhances them with a bit more of a sharp hair-like texture. I'm also using one of my hair brushes to kind of um, smooth or blur areas to make it look a bit better. So there I just pick new colors for the blonde hair for the light and dark because they need to be altered a bit uh, differently than the red hair. So this is still the a soft light painting mode with a light and a dark. You can see at the top of the Photoshop file when the UI is visible, the colors and the soft light mode. It's good not to have everything sharp. There are a couple of areas where I go in with the um, sm smudge brush and kind of smooth it to give it more of a soft, like all the hair is totally together look. And I'm using the darks and the lights to really try and bump up those clumps that I implied earlier with the bigger brush. Now I'm adding a the scalp because I wanted some of the hair to be able to show. Kind of blurring it a bit so it looks like hair actually coming out. And then I moved these a little bit offset so it'd be easier to sell that. Still going back and forth, checking all the areas that still look a bit too blurry. You can see here on the bun it doesn't have any of the single pixel work. And by using the single pixels, I can really bring out the hair look for the closer shots. They're not really that necessary, but to make use of the texture size that I have, I felt like I needed to go in and, and make it look like you can see some individual hairs in places. Adding more darks, this is to really make it feel like the bun is separate and overlapping the the, um, the rest of the hair. Uh, I kept from, I edited out all the times where I switched back to the viewport because it was just too short of a time. It was really jarring on the, on the eyes, so for the rest of the texture I think you only see the flat painted view in uh, Photoshop um, just to keep things clear, but I am constantly checking how these how this looks on the model. Just adding more and more hair. Now these parts would be totally worthless if I hadn't already um, given lots of color variation, lots of the clump definitions with the larger brush. These are all just um, you know kind of cleanup. It's it's just takes way too long to try and paint these with individual hair brushes. So that was me just making a selection with a jagged. Um, polygonal lasso tool, and then feathering the selection, and then change the color based on uh, using the hue shift tool. I felt like the dark was just too dark with not enough colors, so that's what I was doing there. Now this is the shadow from the hair casting on the skin, the scalp, so I'm just using a nice 
color, then um, adding the shadow from her bangs. And this is in a, um, a blend mode, I think, uh, soft light, so that you can still see some of the skin showing through. And then just blurring it so it has a nice soft edge to it. Now I'm cleaning up the edges of the eyebrows, uh, painting in the mask area, and now I'm bringing in the colors from the hair. So I'm going up to the hair to pick them. This is just the mask. I'm going in to sharpen it up and really try and change the shape and get it to feel like a thin, tightly plucked military eyebrow.